Hello everyone, this is Jane Day Zero here, and I'm gonna be bringing you a not really a video. I've been um, I haven't done any of these videos in a long time. I usually do them on my second channel, which is Jane Day, but I've decided to do it this time because this is a huge, huge thing for um, the new game for Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, considering that we have new cards called Link cards and their new me summoning method, which is Link Summon. It is kind of, they also get their own special zones, so they're kind of like pendulums in a way. But the thing is, the game, this, in the fall, this game is going to change so much. You have no idea. Like, okay, so the new ace, or se semi-ace monster for the new series, for um, Yusaku F Fujiki, I, th I think that was it. Yusaku Fujiki, I, I'm still blurry on the name. But the guy right here, his name is Decode decodes talker yeah decode talker um it's a dark cybers type so i'm assuming that's going to be a new type of monster now it's kind of weird i wonder if they're going to make um all uh, all um what was it called again um link monsters cybers types considering it's cyberspace and all that kind of stuff whatever i see what what konami did there <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's an effect monster. It's Link 3. This this right here, Link 3, is going to be a huge part of the new game mechanic. So that's something you guys will have to be wary of. Its attack is 2300. It requires two or more effect monsters. So I'm still... It, apparently it, right here it's supposed to say what you need in order to summon this monster. So it, its first effect is gains 500 attack for each monster linked to it. So these arrows at the corner of the of the picture of the card frame are going to be the link um, things that link the monster, the link monster with the other monster cards in the monster card zone. And it says its second effect is when an opponent's card effect that targets a card you control is activated, you contribute one of your monsters linked to this card, making the activation. And if you do destroy it. Uh, it says further information. Look at those distinctive link. Mod yeah, that's just a Japanese um, part of the magazine. Okay, so there's two ways of link summoning. So this is gonna be kind of weird in a in a way because so the link monsters apparently I've already read through this, so I kind of know the gist of what's going on. So the way you're gonna link summon is if you have two monster cards or two effect monsters, like let's say we're trying to summon Deco Talker right here, right? And the way you can summon it is from the extra deck, so I'm not sure if they're going to keep... Well, based on this um, picture right here, I'm assuming the extra deck um, is still going to be relevant. So there's no new extra deck like rumors have been talking about and stuff. But um, the way you're going to be link summoning is if you have to, like on this diagram right here, if you have two effect monsters or the required um, the requirements of to summon that guy, so... Um, you send those guys to the graveyard, and you can link summon onto the extra um, extra zone. I, I think that was, that's what it was called. Pretty sure it was the extra extra zone or something like that. And apparently, the new mechanic for the oh yeah, the second way before that, the second way to summon it is if you already have a link monster on on the extra zone, and you have let's say it's link three, right? And the the other link monster in the in the extra zone is link two. You can use um, let's let me reread this. You can link summon something from your extra deck by sending the same number of monsters that meet material requirements written in the card's effect box. Whose total number is equal to the link number from the field to the graveyard. Hmm. Decrease materials by using the link monsters. Link monsters are treated as the same number of materials as its link number. However, to use them, you must match the requirements written on the card. Okay, so I'm assuming that if you have another link 3 monster, 
on the field already or on the exo zone and you're trying to summon an, a level or a link 3 monster from your exo deck I'm assuming you can use that monster as a tribute to link summon um, whatever like example if you have a decode talker already on a field and you want to replace it with another decode talker you can by sending it to the graveyard to have two decode talkers at least that's what I'm assuming it, it how it works there's a lot of questions though that could arise from this uh, I've, I've read recently uh, on here it says that the well it's being sidetracked a little bit but um, the link, new link monsters cannot be in face down defense mode or in defense mode in general so you can't MST or uh, not MST but book of moon it or eclipse it book of eclipse it so it would stay face up on a field like that so it's unaffected by cards that flip it face down so that's that's pretty interesting um so they're absolutely in attack mode always and if you have no monsters in your monster card zone but you do have a link monster your opponent will have to attack your link monster first before getting to your light points so that i guess that's, an, that's a good way to ensure a little slight defense to it also, the Link Monsters, Extra Monster Zone, or whatever you want to call it, is also shared with your opponent. So, I guess, it's first come, first serve. So, if you get two Link Monsters in those two zones, I'm assuming your opponent won't be able to use that zone until it dis they destroy your Link mon their, yeah, their Link Monsters. So, that's kind of an iffy situation, because that, that makes it unfair, considering if you Terra Top, if you Special Summon Terra Top, then search for... Um, Forgot the card name, and you special then tribute those two to Link Summon from your extra deck. Then you special whatever, Burning Abyss and stuff. Considering that extra zone and monster code zone is totally different, I can see Burning Abyss being a huge, huge um, thing here. So if you summon two Burning Abyss monsters, you can just special summon two Burning Abyss monsters. I mean, you can just tribute them to summon another Link monster, and that freaking so OP. Because once you get your Link Monster cards out, it's a way for you to summon more cards from your extra deck faster, I'm assuming. So, um, I guess that's one way. It's like a... Because it, I've heard people say it's like a key to... You have to unlock your extra deck, zone, extra deck cards before you can actually start playing them. So that means the game will be extremely slower than it, than it is at the current meta. So, none of the... Um, First turn synchros, first turn X's, and all that kind of shit. So that means pretty much that means if you're if you're running a turbo quasar deck or any kind of synchro turbo synchro deck, I highly recommend you try to get rid of it as soon as possible because those deck that deck is gonna be dead, like really dead, and it's it's basically unplayable. At, if you're trying to get Quasar first turn. But of course you'll be able to make Quasar second turn. Or your second time you go. Or not second time you go. But the after your opponent's turn. And it's your turn again. So it's possibly you can make Quasar. But unlikely considering that your opponent might have cards to destroy all your, or your all of your stuff. So that's a big. Uh, yeah that's that's kind of sucks for everyone who's playing Sy Turbo Synchro at the moment. So that sucks. Um, and basically, if you want, I'm, I'm kind of wondering about mass change in elemental heroes. Because if you mass change um, your. Um, okay, so this is how it is. If you have a Link Monster already in your Link Monster Zone, you can treat your Monster Zones as a way to summon your extra cards as well. But if you don't have a Link Monster on the field, on, that's yours then you won't be able to summon cards from the extra deck on your monster card zone so like for example if you have, if you have two level fours and you're trying to X's over into rebellion or castell or something you won't be able to until you have an, a link monster on the field so that makes an extra gate in, for you to go through in order to summon your monsters but when it comes to mass change I think elemental heroes will get hit a lot with this if you don't have uh, a link monster already already on the field, you can you will only be able to summon one x one masked um, masked hero monster. 
so... But the thing is, um, I believe the extra cards, extra card like XCs, Synchros, and stuff like that, um, if they're summoned to the extra zone, um, I think they are still affected by um, Book of Moon and stuff like that. Only the Link monsters aren't affected by Book of Moon. So, that's that. Um, let's see, so what has been monster is now the main monster zone. So basically, in the main monster zone, you can only summon mon regular monsters like normals or effect monsters from your hand or deck. So you, at first turn, you can't summon. Well, I already explained it, but you first turn you can't summon any synchros, XCs, and stuff like that. Also, the big, huge difference is that pendulums are gonna be nerfed really big. Look at this. Okay, so your pendulum zones are now shared with your spells and trap card zone, which I think they should have done that to begin with, but I mean, that's just me. But so basically, if you have if you if you don't have any spell any pendulum cards on the currently on the field and you don't really and you're not running any pendulum cards or pendulum deck, then you will you can use those zones as a regular spell and trap card zone. But if you have a pendulum based deck, and you have in your that pendulum based deck is really heavy with spells and traps apparently you won't be able to use all your spells and traps because you'll only have three zones for spells and traps and i know a lot of people like to keep at least one zone occupied unless they know they will be using it next turn so basically you're gonna have to choose wisely whether you want to run a pendulum deck with let minimal to like three or four traps or whatever that you set and yeah, that's that's gonna be a big game changer considering that um, cards that like I believe let's see, Magic Specters they have a lot of back row and they pendulum summon so Magic Specters is gonna be hit, gonna be hit with this new mechanic because they will only be able to set three cards instead of five. Let's see. Says, Although the extra deck monsters can only be spum summoned to the extra monster zone normally, if you have a link monster in the mo extra, the zones pointed at their link markers can be used to summon extra deck monsters. So if you get out link summoning quickly, you can bring out fusion, synchro, XC's monster in succession. Of course, you can summon another link monster in one of those zones. So if you play your cards right, you can fill your entire monster zone with extra deck monsters. Huh. Okay, so. It says you can quickly summon Fusion, Synchro, and Xyz monster in succession, but how exactly is that supposed to work? Based on this, it says Link summon this, then you can Link summon another card, then that leads you to, to Special Summon Rebellion or Blackwing, whatever. Huh. I wonder how that's gonna work. Is it because, is, it, is this treated as like, if you had two level 4 XC or material, you can just special summon Rebellion right off the back? Because if that means, that means even though you start up slow, you'll be able to, to special summon even faster from your extra deck. So I guess it's a, a kind of a good way to think about what you're going to do um, in terms of strategy. So that's pretty interesting. Let's see, here's the Q&A thing um, for the new mechanic. The first question, if, if special summon an extra deck monster, if you special summon an extra deck and it goes through the graveyard, and I want to special summon it with Monster Reborn, which zone does it go to? The answer to that is if it goes to the main, it goes to into the main monster card zone. No, not the extra monster zone. But the question is, if you don't have a link monster on the field and you use Monster Reborn to special summon one of your extra deck monsters. I'm assuming it doesn't, I'm assuming, well that's a good question because I don't even know if it goes to the extra zone or if it goes to the monster card zone. Considering that you don't have a, a link monster on the field. So that's pretty interesting. The second question is can you use Book of Moon? Yeah this is where I got the reference of that you can't flip any of those guys face down. So link monsters cannot be face down no matter what. 
If your opponent, if your opponent's only monster is in their extra monster zone, you can attack them directly. Nope, you can't. As long as there's a monster of any kind in play, you would have to attack that monster first. So, like I said earlier, if there's a link monster and you have no monsters in your monster card zone, you have to attack the link monster. That's why that link monster has 2,500 attack. Otherwise, it'd be zero or whatever, and, and you will be able to attack directly. But that's good. It's an extra defense for you, so you won't get LTK'd really fast. Let's see. You can destroy two set and spell traps in your leftmost and rightmost spell card with wavering eyes. So basically, it's asking um, if you have two face-up continuous spell cards and you use wavering eyes. Um, will that will wavering eyes effect still apply? And they basically said no, it doesn't, because obviously those continuous spell cards aren't pendulum cards. So if you have two, if you have at least one pendulum card on your pendulum zone where the new spell and trap card zone is, whatever, um, and you use activate wavering eyes, only that pendulum card will be destroyed, and your face up continuous spell card won't be. So there's that. So it's a pretty new strategy, you'll have to be really considerate of where you place your cards and stuff. So it's a pretty interesting uh, mechanics that they're adding to it. Also, I don't, I'm not sure if they're going to ha actually have that you can't pendulum still in the first turn. Because that would be, that would, I'm not sure, that would kind of slow the game a little bit even more. If you can't pendulum still in the first turn. But that's pretty interesting. If they do decide to go with no pendulum zone first turn, no pendulum summon first turn, then the game will be a little bit more slower. So in order, other people will be able to keep up with the game in a sense. But the meta game, everyone's gonna be pissed because they want the game to be fast paced and everything. And you know, it, at tournaments, the game, I don't know, people are kind of tired and they want to get it, get it over quickly. So, you know, it's going to make the game slower. I wonder if they're going to bump up the timing for the for the whole match thing at tournaments, but I'm not I'm not even sure about that. So, with the new mechanic coming out and obviously zones are going to be super important and it's going to be based on that. Obviously, there's going to be um card spiking in prize that has to do with Monster Zone, like I myself, I actually went out of my way and bought like 12 copies of, of this particular spell card. Um, and if you look right now on TCG Player, which we're going to look at right now, um, right here, let's see, one of the cards that has to do with occupying zones is Senate Switch. So this spell card is in particular, it says once per turn during your main phase, you can move one monster on your side of the field to an adjacent unoccupied monster card zone. So th this card has been spiking up in price. I'm not really sure how this will come into play and in with the new mechanic that's going to come out. But I, b I think people are believing and are getting hype because of the way that zones play a huge major role in how you're gonna be using it considering that link link monsters um are connected in um in, uh, how would you say it not parallel but um adjacent to um their their mark so for example since rebellions on the other zone and there's another monster i'm assuming that magic card will allow your you to um, switch your monster with another monster so you can use it as bait for the um, leak monsters effect so that's one way of putting it I guess it's an okay card it's it's a way to move your cards around I guess considering that um, now that you can't really move your cards anymore with this new mechanic ev everyone's gonna be nitty-gritty about whether you moved your monster card in a different place because it used to be where where uh, if you play uh, a, on a mat that doesn't have any zones or something, you can just put everything together, crunch them up. That way you have space for other stuff. But now everyone's going to get on you for moving your cards around and stuff. So that's going to be a big, big um, issue in the new game. Also, uh, another card um, 
yeah, well, wait, first we're gonna look at the prices for this. It says 24 cents, but if you include shipping and handling, it's like 69 cents, so it's like about a dollar. And that's only for the lightly played, I'm assuming. It doesn't really say anything. Um, yeah, look at that. A dollar 99 plus 18 cents. That's that's a fucking huge ripoff, dude. Um, but yeah, looks like the, the this card is pretty much spiking in price because of the hype. Look, four dollars right here. There's even people already commenting on th that they're bu buying the the um the card, and well, yeah, th that's why there's only like one of everything. Except this guy has nine of, but he know he's smart and he's increasing the price by four dollars, so he's trying to profit off of that. Yep, see, it must buy at this moment. So this guy is tr is right. If you're planning on playing Link Monsters, this card looks like it's gonna be hyped up to an extent that it's gonna be like probably a ten dollar card, maybe. I can see it being five dollars in the next couple weeks, but other than that, I mean, yeah. It, there's only one print of this. It's only been printed in Cyber Dark Impact, and it's a common. So this card is gonna go for a lot considering there's only one of its kind that's been in one pack well not one of its kind but you know what I mean also another card to look out for which I'm considering on purchasing myself but I'm not I'm too iffy about it is blasting fuse um, this card is under the radar at the moment no one re is really looking at this one but this card is gonna be I can tell that this card is gonna be really important um, especially in the new um, Link in the Link um, whole zone thingy because this card a says activate only when all four zones of this card's column are occupied destroy all cards in this column so the way this I'm not really sure how this is going to go because considering that there's no longer four zones like if you have your Link monster right here then spell and trap zone and monster card zone your opponent's monster card zone and their spell and trap card zone so there's basically going to be five zones so I'm, i wonder if this only applies to cards that aren't in the link zone or in the extra zone but i'm not sure about this they're gonna have to ir read of this or do something about this because this card is going to be really good if because this way this card's basically it's a it destroys everything in that zone in all those zone or possibly if you don't have any oops my bad that was my streaming stuff but if possibly if you don't have a, a monster card zone and where your where your opponent's link monster is at and you activate that card it would apply to your opponent's link monster their monster and their spell cards so all three of those monsters would be destroyed which is a really good effect so the, I can see this guy going up in price as well, but as of now, it's only 10 cents. So if you're planning on buying this card, I would get it as soon as possible because they're only like 25 cents and stuff. So this guy is going to be really good. But yeah, other than that, I mean, yeah, what, tell me what you guys think about the new Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains. I think that the name is kind of weird. They could have gotten with um, something else like, I don't know, Cyber Reality something something like that but I don't know about the whole name thing I mean the name sounds kind of weird and especially saying it arc V or arc 5 sounds more fluent as when you say it but as far as reigns go eh, it's okay I guess the protagonist looks okay too I mean it's not as well his hair reminds me a lot of um, Yuma Tsukamo with the pink stripes pointing and stuff like that so uh, but it looks like he's way older than Yuma. He's probably like 16, so he's probably even older older than um, Yuya. So that's good at least. They're actually making him o older. So there's that. I, I'm assuming there's going to be more... The, mature, the story will be a little bit more mature, I hope. But yeah, there's that. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, explain... Hope it explains your the me new mechanics for the game and what exactly uh, to get before the structured deck comes out and then people are start hyping it and shit like that but yeah ho yeah hope you guys enjoy this video and yeah subscribe comment like or whatever all that junk and i guess i'll see you guys later